Hi everybody, it's Diane, and I don't know what take this is. I have been, if we had a bloopers reel, it would be full is all I can say. Um, I'm Lucky Gardenia, and this is my 11th video, and I will be talking about um, cross stitching, so it's a floss tube video, but also I not only talk about that, I incorporate kind of a life update and kind of the ins and outs of my life and sometimes funny stories that have happened to me come to mind. I don't know how to edit, so if this keeps on rolling, you're bound to see me stumble over some words or I do happen to crack myself up and that happens quite a lot. It's not just when I'm taping. Um, one of the adjectives of how I describe myself is pretty goofy, but I think that's a good thing. You know, as we get older, it's not that we have to become, you know, old and stodgy. I, I just have more fun and have more experience in my belt. So those that know and love me, hopefully, know that I'm pretty fun loving. And hopefully that will come across as I'm talking to you tonight. Um, happy 4th of July, plus two hours. Um, I get kind of revved up and going late at night. And... Um, when I'm off from work a couple of days, my rhythms of sleep and um, when I get up totally change. So I I don't think I went to bed um, yesterday till like 8.30 in the morning. So I got up in the afternoon. So by the time I get up and rolling, it's pretty late, which is, I can roll with it. I, you know, on vacation, so it's working for me. But... Um, it's pretty sad when you have to get yourself together to make a video, but that's what um, I try to pull it together so I could um, maybe put something out there. I'm trying to be a little bit more consistent on uploading videos. I think it's been a, a little over a week, maybe 10 days, so I wanted to come back and I was thinking, gee, what do I have to share? You know, I really don't have anything stitch related. And, you know, I started thinking, and I'll show you what I actually did. I grabbed an envelope. I was writing and writing and writing. Took up this page, opened it up, that and that. Finally on the back and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm not gonna be able to refer to that and keep this video rolling. So I ended up getting out one of my beautiful journals. This is a Chic Sparrow and um, I don't know if you can tell, it's somewhat, um, I would say eggplant colored and it has ink splatters on it and dribbles and I just love it. Um, Chic Sparrows is one of my favorite journals and um, it's a traveler's notebook and I'll take a, talk a little bit further about that later in the video but anyway I, I started writing everything down in here and I can't tell you how many pages I have. So um, just thought I would share what my thoughts are. I had much more that I thought I could share and hopefully you'll stick with me through this and if you like it I would appreciate you following me and I will follow you back. I have found so many um, channels that I just adore and I don't watch it just for the stitching related um, content. There's people that I feel like I know already and I ran across a new um, Floss Tuber, and I wrote down his name. Um, his um, channel's name is Stitching in Sound, like make sound. And I think he has four um, Floss Tube videos up now, up and running, and he just cracks me up. I just love to watch him, and he's so expressive. So I, I highly recommend it. You know, go on and watch the first one, but get into... By the third and fourth one, he's really rolling with it. So I encourage you to watch it. Um, he's one of those that I'll go back to, kind of like Pam and Steph from Just Keep Stitching, that you just feel like you know them. And I think he even said, you know, there's people you just watch and you think, I wish I lived by them. They'd be a great friend. You know, I would love to hang out with them. So hopefully some of you may connect and feel that way about me. And I know I feel that way about many of those that I watch. So I appreciate everyone that takes their time to 
film a video, upload it, get proper lighting, um, think about what they're going to say. It, you know, it's really not a willy-nilly or drop of a hat. You know, it's somewhat, you know, after your first one, you get to know your needleworker tag. Tag it, you know, it, you have to really put in some thought. And like I said, mine is not fully stitch related because clearly I am not a mass producer. Um, I'm one of those creatives that I need to feel like doing it to do it. And um, I was talking to a friend earlier. I was talking about, you know, making things to sell. And, you know, I've never been that way. Uh, a, I'm a quilter, I've done other type of artistic things, and if I'm spending my time making it, it's just because I'm enjoying it, and they're kind of like a baby to me. I, I really am not very good at sending them out to the world for whatever reason. So, um, I think I've mentioned it before, I it's kind of a process, and I think the downside to watching all these videos is you're always seeing something you haven't seen before. And there are so many excellent designers for um, cross stitch nowadays, and it's not like it was back in the 80s. The folk style, the geese with a bow or a plaid, or um, I mean, it's really progressed and it's really an art. So um, I'm always seeing something that catches my eye, and I'm having a really hard time deciding, honing in on what I'm going to stitch, you know, what I'm going to commit some time to. I need to pick a time of the day to sit down and just do it. And what I've found in the past is, you know, sometimes if you just say to yourself, you know, I may not be feeling it, but I'm going to sit down and I'm going to, let's say, stitch or paint or whatever you're going to do for 15 minutes. And at that point, check in. If I'm having fun, then continue, and most of the time, I keep on going, and especially nowadays with um, floss tube and um, all these other videos to watch, all the online um, apps to watch, videos, Netflix, Hulu, Prime Video, Apple, um, Hallmark, all those I have and I do watch in audiobooks. I am a heavy duty listener of audiobooks and I would ask anyone if you have a favorite audiobook to let me know. Um, I love an author that has a whole series of um, books and I'll run through them all. And uh, Mitch Flynn, I think it's, um, I'm trying to think of the Vince can't think of his last name um, you know I, I ran all through that series uh, the Barry Eisler um, rain series I loved um, Longmire uh, I like a lot of the mysteries um, a couple you know romance kind of kind of like Hallmark type of books and then I do listen to some biographies I'm very interested in you know the royals from you know years ago that type of thing but um or you know georgia o'keefe um, just anything that may have be of interest so if you have anything that you really think i may like just let me know i'm always looking for either a new tv show um or an audiobook or in fact just a hard copy um but more than likely i still like the feel of a hard copy book but you know, I, I have my iPhone with me everywhere I go. I have my headphones. If I'm grocery shopping, whatever I'm doing, I'm going to be listening to something. And um, so I'm, I've, I, I'm embarrassed to probably count how many books I own on audio tape but, um, or through Audible. But I do go back and I listen to them sometimes repeatedly. So um, anyway, I need some suggestions, guys. Um, let me look at my notes and see what I want to talk to you about. I do have um, a couple of new patterns that I want to discuss with you, maybe share with you what I've got on order, hopefully to start soon. Um, I also, I've already told you about the um, new floss tube video that I ran, ran across and um, recommend you um, staying with them through his first four videos. and. 
he just cracks me up. So, um, really enjoy watching him. But I also wanted to um, talk about someone that is not stitch related, and it just happens to be one of those video channels um, on YouTube that I crossed earlier in the year and immediately was drawn to. Um, her name is Emily Howard, and um, she was young. She's in her 20s, um, early on, I think late teens. Um, she was diagnosed with skin cancer and it um, led to terminal cancer diagnosis. And she documented her whole um, journey through that. She, you know, it got to a point where they said, you know, if there's anything in your life that you want to do, we suggest you do it. And she married the love of her life and her name is, I, I believe, uh, Aisha. And all I can say about those two and their family and their support system is what grace. I mean, to share that with everybody, it's such a difficult journey and they did it with dignity and grace and I was so sad. I'm going to cry. Uh, she passed away and it's just so sad, but highly recommend you watch her. Uh, I'm going to cry. This is ridiculous, but that's why I'm saying you feel close to these people. She's in the UK. Never met her. But they just touch your heart. So I better move on to something else so I won't cry. Um, let's talk about the 4th of July. That's somewhat happy. Um, before I jump into that, behind me, I, I think I pointed that out. It's from a um, workshop I took years ago from Casey Willis and loved her style of art. Um, saw her in, I think, Somerset Studios and this had to be probably 14 or more years ago and it had her email address on there and at that point I always try to buy something um, from an artist like once a year and I contacted her and and uh, she did like wall hangings and, and little wall um, pieces and she also did altars so um, contacted her she was ve very willing to um, make something for me and send it to Texas so um, I think the first thing I, I bought from her is a small piece of wall art and then I she does altars so I bought one from her and it was too big and hard to get down, but um, I loved everything she did. She is a very intriguing person. She um, was a jazz singer. She then became an artist and um, then she, she found a calling with um, an Indian tribe up in um, the Dakotas, I believe. and began a rescue for dogs up there and began to help those um, individuals on the, the rescue or on the reservation and um, she has been such a blessing to them but she really just gave up um, producing art and doing the workshops and solely committed herself to that and um, again her name is Casey Willis and I believe she's on um, face, uh, Facebook so you can find her um, very interesting, fun person to be around, but I don't know if you can see it, um, back here is an altar that I made at one of her classes, I don't know, it's the Lady of Guadalupe, and what was so cool is that her husband, they would go out and find pieces from furniture, I, you can see this used to be part of a chair, the back side is part of a drawer. These were legs on something that they split in half. And I think this looks like part of a table, kind of like a leaf. And you would pick out what you wanted. This is, um, it's, it's a photo. It's, it goes through a um, printer, but it is, you take a photo and it comes off on you know, ultimately, a fabric is what you iron it onto. 
and then you kind of work around that. So she would always bring vintage um, trim and I don't know if you can see that, but that's like a door handle down here. Anyway, um, love her art. I can't tell you how many pieces that I own. Uh, she, at one time during the year, she had a humongous cell and I took a leap and bought a really large piece of wall art from her. And um, she's very drawn to um, the Old West. And, um, and, and in fact, that's what, I don't know if you can see this, it represents the stars on the flags, but they're miniature pictures of women that um, from the wild, wild west, basically. And they're real photos. And, um, you know, they kind of pioneered where we are today. And um, it's very interesting, and their lives are very hard, but they really got us to where we are today. Um, also, I think this was like a three-day workshop. And because I lived in the area, you know, I just drove there every day. And so we made the flag one day, the altar one day, and then... I made this, I need to, this came unraveled, but uh, made this um, wall piece. And, you know, if you have a sewing machine, I don't sew clothes. I do quilt um, my piecing, but you can do decorative stitches and also just sew on these type of things. So, anyway. This is my kind of style. It's it's very eclectic. I'm kind of a shabby chic type of person, but I just thought I'd share that part of um, another side besides um, cross stitching that I enjoy and have done in the past. But um, what made me think of it is I thought, gee, I need a Fourth of July backdrop, and I thought, gee, let me get this. Um, when I was thinking about 4th of July, it's one of those holidays that I don't necessarily feel like that I have to go out and do anything, but I was thinking back, reflecting on 4th of July's of my youth and, and, and just the good memories that I had and was thinking back, you know, what we used to do as a family when I was um, growing up and what comes to mind is we would always make homemade vanilla ice cream or peach ice cream. We had these peach trees out in our backyard and they made the best homemade ice cream. And it wasn't, you know, um, electric. You had to hand churn it. You put the salt in the ice and, you know, we had to sit on top of it and churn it. And um, it was just wonderful. And um, so that comes to mind. We always had sparklers you know living in suburbia we couldn't really do firecrackers um, we did sparklers and um, we would go see the fireworks at, at the like at the high school stadium they would have a big production and I remember you know you were so close to where they were shooting them off you know all the embers would fall down and you could actually get burnt by them but um, I guess I was a pretty chicken as a kid and you know, I would start crying and um, anyway, I was just a scaredy cat is all I got to say. But, um, but we would do that every year. And so that came to mind and then also got me thinking, you know, gee, what else did we do during the summer? And as a family, we went to the coast a lot um, to like Corpus Christi. And being from Dallas, Fort Worth, that's quite a, a lengthy, drive down there and there I guess it was when I was a teenager my dad um, learned how to fly and he had a twin engine Cessna I think a 182 it's like a four-seater okay we have five people in our family or we did um, my mom and my dad and I have two other sisters and we're all gonna get in this four-seater I don't know if you've ever seen a Cessna and, um, you know, the three of us would like be crammed in the back and I, I guess it was kind of good that I went through a anorexic stage because we kind of fit back there, but it was 
kind of a joke, but not a joke. Um, you know, he'd be calculating how much we weighed, what our suitcases, the weight of everything, and would we be able to get off the ground, so to speak. So, um, somewhat frightening, but I, I don't think I had a choice in the matter. Once we got there, we had a great time, and nothing like being on the beach, you know, hearing the oceans come in, you know, just, it was a really good memories for me. So, all I could remember is, you know, sitting sometimes in the little waiting area, waiting for bad weather to pass, and, um, I think back of it, I, you know, we would see storms off, you know, far, not that far away, and, um, uh, so it was exciting, somewhat scary at times, and it gets kind of hot in those little um, airplanes. Uh, and back then we didn't have any iPhones or anything, so I, I'm not real sure what we did for the length of time that we had to be up there, but um, anyway, it certainly was a memory maker. Um, but there was good one good thing to my dad having an airplane. Um, I always seem to get myself into situations where I got in, I guess, over my head. And um, a couple of situations that I remember, I, I, this was when I was in high school and we went, a girlfriend and I drove down to visit her sister. She was going to Abilene Christian College, I think is what it was called. Um, we drove down there, she had a Mustang, we're listening to our 8-track tapes. I mean, this is how far back, you know, I, it wasn't when I was in high school, listening to Bread and singing along and got there and it must have been the weekend. And I knew I was kind of in trouble when I saw that in her apartment, there was a bong and then they had a party and I, I thought, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble now. So. The one thing that I really knew with my parents growing up is, you know, don't be afraid to call home, you know, yeah, maybe you get in over your head, but reach out and, and they would always come help me out. My dad flew down. <laughs> I don't know how I got to the airport. Um, he came and picked me up and off I went. And um, I kind of knew when I, I needed to get out of a place. Um, Secondly, uh, when I was a Apache Bell and um, must have had the weekend off is all I can say. We must have had, the, the team must have been away uh, for a football game, so we had the weekend off. And I was dating somebody in high school that went to A&M. And he was being, you know, I guess the first year in the Corps down there. So went down for homecoming went to the bonfire and all the activities. Well, I had driven down with somebody that I went to high school with and um, we weren't dating or anything. So, it, you know, I don't know how we had disconnect, but we never reconnected. You know, I went to go stay with friends from um, high school that were going to school down there. And then the end of the weekend came and no ride home. So, my dad, again, flew down, picked me up. I don't know. He must have flown me to Tyler. Um, but, you know, I look back on it, and, you know, I never got in trouble for anything like that. It was like, I think he looked at it as an opportunity to be a hero, and not only to get some hours under his belt dry, uh, flying. So, um, and then when I had decided to transfer to... Um, Texas Tech um, I decided over Christmas and I'd been accepted and I had the commitment to be in the New Year's Day parade um, and the Apache Bells were performing in New Orleans uh, for the Super Bowl so um, my mom's like you have a commitment you're gonna follow through they flew up to Lubbock they got to my dorm room brought all my stuff and um, I guess when I got home from the Super Bowl, I, I flew up. I had not even registered for one class. Um, sometimes I'm impulsive or fly by the seat of my pants. It worked out. I um, had a great roommate up there. And um, if I look back, I probably would have done things differently. But um, 
anyway, just things come back. You, you start thinking back on, on your life and just funny moments. But um, so those are kind of my thoughts on 4th of July um, and what it came brought back to, to my mind this today. Um, anyway, let me see what else I was going to talk to you about. Um, Let me talk about um, what I'm working on. I think I've already showed you the Abstract Frida and Abstract Pug. So those are still in the work. I'm working on a long dog sampler, kind of pulling different pieces together from different samplers that I bought um, from them and trying to piece together something. And then was watching um, stitching and sound and you know with the 4th of July here I thought he brought forward a pattern that had just come um, that had been re-released and he had just received it and um, let me find it and it was patriotic and let me get it out of the bag had I known they were going to re-release this, I would not have bought this. This was from the original run, and um, these were highly sought after, um, very pricey um, on the first run because they weren't, I think they were made in, you know, for the memory or to uh, memorialize the 9-11, um, and it's Lady of the Flag. And it's a Mir Mirabilia by Nora Corbett. And um, I had it. I, I hadn't started it. And I thought, gee, you know, um, I coveted this pattern. And I looked and looked and looked everywhere for it. You know, looking at eBay, looking for anyone that would be selling their copy. And never could find one. Um, I think the conversation on some of the floss tube channels have been how outrageously priced they had gotten. I'm looking at this. This is from the store. Um, I can't even read what store this was. Um, but originally this was dated February 2002 and it was for 12 bucks. So I think what you'll find on eBay right now is like $700, I guess, for the first run editions. Um, they did do a special uh, run of these as a re-release. I guess it's good that I bought this. I did not buy it for an outrageous price, like $700, bucks, but it was probably the most expensive pattern I've ever purchased. Um, and I was thinking, gee, I, I should have just waited. You know, I, who knew that they'd re-release it? But to be honest, I didn't even know they re-released it because it must have come out during the time when I was kind of um, MIA d due to, um, you know, my father was ill and then he passed away in September and just kind of um, the stitchy bug had kind of left and I wasn't um, watching the YouTube videos or following any of the Facebook groups, so I, I just didn't know it, the, the re-release. Now, they, they may come back with more, but I, I do have a legit copy. Um, I guess there's some non-legit um, versions of this that people can get their hands on, but um, I thought, gee, I really need to do this. You know, I want to start something patriotic and I think I've already said my eyesight's not very good, and I do most of my stitching on Ada. And I thought, you know, if I'm going to put the time and the effort into something that will hopefully be an heirloom, I need to get the appropriate uh, fabric. So I believe it calls for linen, but what I found, I was looking on Instagram. And there's versions of this where people have opted to do like a sky blue, you know, some hand dyed um, version. You see it on cream background. You see it on different, I saw one, a really like dark uh, blue background that was stunning. 
Um, but the, I think it was a Picture Me Plus or something like that, um, dyed fabric, and it kind of was like a blue purple, and I thought, you know, due to the one-off, you know, they're each individually done, that if you could get something that you spent quite a deal of money on, and it really be purple and not blue, and that just wouldn't work for me. So, um, I did see versions where the background, it looked like something was written. And come to find out, you know, I'm searching Instagram and trying to find out where they, the source that they found that. And what it was, it was, I found it on Facebook, um, a woman's on there, I believe from Arizona. And I uh, can't think of the name of her shop, but, you know, I could find it. I clicked to it and it's called We the People. And, um... So I thought, heck, I'm going to order that. And it usually I like three inches on each side of the design, you know, for framing. I think this is um, going to be a little bit shy of that. Um, maybe, you know, just a little bit shy. But it's like everybody else had fitted onto that piece of fabric. You know, I'm going to do it. It's usually framed pretty close to the design. So, um, that's on order. And also, the other patriotic um, memor memorabilia uh, pattern is called Queen of Freedom. And it's a dark-haired um, lady with, I think she has like a tiara or crown on, and she has a flag in her lap. And it's stunning also. So also ordered that pattern and I ordered some 32 count um, linen um, hoping <laughs> that with my magnifying um, lamps that I have that I can actually do two over two on that and I opted to do that versus Ada because when you get to the faces on these it goes to one on one strand over one instead of two over two to get the finer detail to it so you can't actually do that that I know of very accurately on Ada so I'm hoping for the best and we'll give it a good old college try and so just we'll wait for the materials to come in um, probably would do for individuals who aren't stitchers these um, patterns cause call for a lot of beading and different um, crystals and different um, things that you would add on. I'm guessing at the end because I could just see you beading it and then as you're rolling it up or, or, or putting it, moving the frame around on it, even if it's a, a, a Q-snap or whatever, that you possibly could break them. So I would think that that would be, after you finished everything, that that would be kind of your finishing touches. So. If I'm wrong, hopefully somebody will leave me a comment and kind of um, point me in the right direction. But that is going to be my, hopefully, something that I'll continue to do. Probably will be a lifetime project, knowing me. But um, anyway, I'm looking forward to it. And I do have one from the first run. So that's somewhat exciting. Um, I ran across a pattern. I don't know if I ever showed it to you. I, I probably did, but it was way back last year. And I found this at um, Hobby Lobby, and it was on sale. And it's a kit, and um, I just thought it was cute and something that would be fun to work on. Usually the pieces of Ada that come in these are, are too small. They don't give you enough allowance. So I would use a larger piece of my own, but it does come with all the, hopefully all the floss you would need. Um, but this is the pattern, and I don't know if it has a title. Oh, it says A Cup of Cheer. And just the detailing on those um, china cups I just thought was fun. And then in the background, it's like a polka dot. So I, I thought that was very, um, like they say, a, a cup of cheer. What can I say? Um, 
So I wanted to share that with you. And then another piece of haul, it, it's not cross stitch related, but I think I've mentioned I like to do watercoloring. And one of my favorite artists is um, Danielle Donaldson. And she came out with a new book. And she also has um, courses online that are very, very reasonable through Jean Oliver's studio. And I don't know if you can see it. Uh, let's see. She has some really interesting techniques that you can do. She walks you through it. Um, there's just different things. Um, you can probably find a flip through of this book, but it's called The Art of Creative Watercolor by Danielle Donaldson. She also is on Instagram and she is on um, Facebook. So she's a lovely person. She does a lot of in-person type of workshops. You know, if you watch my videos, I don't really travel. So online is great for me. And even if you just buy watercolors and just sit down and do swatches, um, it is meditative and you can throw a little bit of salt on there and you'll get these different um, effects. You can, you know, drop another color in there and it's just remarkable. And if you do any type of journaling, then, you know, you can cut out little pieces of watercolor paper, paper and um, make a dashboard out of it or, you know, frame it as a piece of art. And I just really enjoy it. And she also, I think she's, as she's gone along over the years, I think she's now working primarily with, um, I think it's Daniel Smith. I may be going crazy, but um, he has an excellent line of watercolors and very unique um, colors that you won't find anywhere else. And he'll go find the natural um, things from mountains and different um, parts of the world and make them into paint. You can buy like these, I think they come in like three different pages and they've got like a drop of each color. And you can make, um, and maybe I'll show them to you sometime, but you can make like a sample of, you know, it gives you just enough to do like a, a swatch of it and you can see what the color looks like when it's you know he heavy pigmented down to getting lighter and before you spend a lot of money on a tube of um, watercolor paint because it does get expensive there is um, a person that owns a shop on Etsy that will sell them individually pre poured pre poured into the little um, uh, pans you know and then you can buy like the black tins and put the half pans I do have pans and that way you know over a period of time you can get a collection of it because it is an investment but anyone who has used watercolors knows it doesn't take a lot to you could buy a, a tube of it and it could last you for a, a very 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 long time so highly recommend that Even if you're not artistic, it's meditative. You know, put on some music you like or some show you like to watch and just sit there and play with it. And again, I highly recommend um, Danielle's classes. They are very fun and whimsical and like that other um, chart I just showed you, it's very cheerful and uplifting. So I think we all need a little bit of that in our life. Um, let me look at my notes. Also, I bought a couple of new, you know, patterns that are PDF, so I don't have them to show you, but um, one is from Satsuma Street, and she's also has a Facebook group, and these are also very cheerful, happy, colors very um, cheerful and I, I saw someone who posted kind of an in-process um, 
of their, it's, she has a cities version, and there are cities from all over the world. But this one have, had to do with um, Hawaii. And given that the volcano is going off, and um, that's, you know, current life, and it does in this pattern have a volcano erupting. So I thought, that's very timely. I was going to order it. it. Like a digital version of that is like $7, and immediately you download it. So, you know, I'm instantly, you know, waiting for it to be shipped to you, and you can um, have it, you can read it on a good reader uh, app or Acrobat app or whatever you use, but it really, um, very affordable. And I highly recommend, you know, you can look for the hashtags on Instagram or on Facebook. And there is a group um, of individuals that show, share what they're stitching. And I don't think you'll be disappointed. It's really quite, um, I don't know, I've, I've, it's very, I don't know, you just have to look at it. It has a distinct style. I did show a couple of the patterns. Um, on my last video about 10 days ago so you might want to go back and maybe look at those also one of my um, favorites as far as artists that has patterns out there in a PDF format um, it's called tempting tangles and I believe the artist designer is Deborah Dick and she's also on Etsy she had, um, I think I showed you one last time, it's called Creation, that is phenomenal. Um, again, that would be one of those, probably for me, more than a lifetime piece. But it would just be the process of doing it that would be um, very re rewarding to me. But came across two other designs that I really liked. Of course, I've bought quite a few of hers. And again, the digital formats are really affordable. And um, she does have on there certain silks that she uses or hand dyes. And if you can search and most of the time there is a cheaper version that, you know, you can convert to DMC. So, um, the one I most recently bought, it's called Jonah's Whale, and it has this really intricate fish in the in the um, center and just the border design, and it's it's very intricate and has some the specialized stitches, somewhat like a um, I'm trying to think of the name of the um, Chatelaines. Anyone that's heard about a Chatelaine, those are highly intricate there's a lot of specialty stitches on it um, there's some beading and special threads uh, but this had the same feel because there are quite a few different um, not just cross stitch that you incorporate into it and it's it really is a wonderful pattern and then also she had a ancestry tree and the the alphabet on the top looks like it's probably uh, inspired from a very very old sampler and I would like to do it just for the alphabet I mean it's just really interesting I haven't seen one like it um, she is on Etsy so that's called ancestry tree now anyone that can look at that and tell me how to lay it out I, I can't figure out I need to look at the instructions you know how the branches go I'm not real sure <laughs> <laughs> Who goes where? Um, but maybe it would be me and then um, my children and if they got married, their children. Or do I start back with my grandparents or my great-grandparents? I don't know. So anyone that can look at that pattern and, you know, I only have it in PDF and I've misplaced my iPad so I can't show it to you. But I would love anyone that takes a look at that to maybe give me some idea of who goes where because um, it's not real evident to me uh, maybe I'm just a little slow but anyway I could use some help please um, I'm gonna kind of do a squirrel <laughs> and talk about a different topic and it has something to do with going back to the 4th of July and I just failed to mention it but um, 
on my Facebook page, I took my profile pic and uh, figured out how to put a frame on it and have the American flag in the background. And those of you outside of the U.S., this is probably boring, but I'm sure they have frames that are individualized for your own country. But thought that would be fun. And knowing that, um, reflecting on my, my I call him my daddy-o, um, who passed not quite a year ago it will be a year at the end of September and my grandmother grandma Dag was a member of the daughters of the revolution and he really um, was you know hoping that we would go through and also join that organization that we did have relatives that fought in the revolution and um, obviously it's been documented for my grandmother to be a member so I thought that's really cool you know you think back and to think that you had someone in your lineage that fought for our freedom and um, you know I I can't imagine how frightening that was and all the um, individuals that are in male and females that are in the military now putting their lives at risk you know they really are brave and much braver than I could ever ever be and just I want to say thank you um, I'm really in awe that we had a relative that was fighting back then and it would be interesting to um, know a little bit more about who that was and you know I think they were up in Pennsylvania is where I, I believe um, but just very interesting and don't know if anybody else out, is out there that knows about the Daughters of the Revolution and is also involved but um, if you'd like to share any thoughts on that in my comments I, I think that would be fun um, so hopefully I'll follow through with that and um, following the footpaths of my grandmother and as I've talked about she she was the creative in my lineage um, my mother wasn't she could draw she could write um, but she really didn't have any creative hobbies and when I think back you know I was doing embroidery I was doing different artistic things but I was kind of a self-starter and I don't even know you know, I'd read the instructions and I remember I wanted to make a Raggedy Ann doll. And I went and bought the pattern, I bought all the supplies and, you know, put it together and I think I still have it. It's kind of wacky looking, but, you know, to, I don't think she even, my mom even, you know, dropped in to see what was true. I'm thinking, hmm, but um, I did do it and, you know, I guess it's it skipped a generation, but um, as an adult, I got to be very close to my grandma Dag. And when my daughters were born, um, it was um, right after the bicentennial or some um, milestone in our country's history, and quilting was coming back. And they did a quilt contest for different quilts that honored the um, bicentennial and I thought gee I want to learn how to quilt so I ended up there was very little little opportunity to learn I mean there were um, very few um, shops that had quilting or any type of needlework and there was a place down I think on Ross Avenue or on McKinney down in near downtown Dallas and I would drive down there and it was called the Great American Cover-Up. And it was in this really historic type of um, shop um, that I'd go and take a class and then my grandmother lived over in the M Streets off of Greenville and which was just a hop, skip and a jump and I would go and I would take her, you know, what I had been given you know the pattern that I was going to work on and hand in hand she she had never had official lessons and she ended up making the same quilt that I made and um, it was really fun to do that because she's the one that exposed me to 
um, quilting in the first place. So um, I think in my family, just from my own knowledge, I think they're, I'm a fifth generation quilter and maybe further back I would imagine because back then it was probably a necessity. So um, anyway, kind of cool, hoping my daughters eventually follow get the stitchy bug and want to learn some type of um, needlework and like I said I'm trying to catch up with them and get them to come be a guest um, on my YouTube channel and they're just um, not only are they lovely inside but outside and they are a hoot they are so funny and I just um, they just crack me up and enjoy getting to know them more as an adult um, at this stage in our life and they're really very cool people and I'm looking at my notes and this reminds me of my daughter Robin um, we were out for my birthday and I was talking about something in high school and you know I was a drill team officer and I was a a vice president of the student council and, and I made some comment that you know I was somewhat popular and <laughs> I didn't hear my daughter but someone told me later that she was sitting a couple of seats down and she goes toot toot and she was meaning I was tooting my own horn but um I said tooting your own horn if, if, if you kind of have the facts to back it up Probably so, but I guess it was toot toot. So that's become um, our joke. And she sent me a text the other night, and um, it, it came across toot toot. And then quickly, what followed is that she had made this um, awesome salad for dinner. And so I called her up. I said, "Oh, tell me uh, what you're toot tooting about." And so she shared it with me, and I made a version of it. I kind of combined um, what she did and then I couldn't remember what she dressing she put on it and had recently been down to a restaurant in um, Denton called Roosters and they have something called Cowboy Slaw. So it's kind of a mixture of that but I made it tonight. It was um, diced up cucumber. I peeled the cucumber and then I diced it up. I had some uh, cherry tomatoes that I um, diced up. I had red onion that I uh, diced up some lettuce. I threw in some um, sweet corn with none of the juice, just some kernels, and then uh, black eyed peas. And threw in some feta cheese. So it was <laughs> it had on all different levels from the Greek Isles to the Cowboy Slaw. But, um, and then I had this dressing I found. I think she had some kind of um, pesto vinaigrette and I didn't find anything quite that interesting um, when I was grocery shopping but I found a vinaigrette that was cilantro and lime and that tasted really good with it so very easy to throw together I'm thinking it was somewhat healthy and so toot toot <laughs> it was pretty good um, I'm going to squirrel again and, and go off to another topic um, real quickly, but um, my mom self, <laughs> she um, put together a cookbook and she called it Apron Strings and she had it self-published and we each had a copy and um, I can remember, you know, we got a copy and uh, my parents had gotten divorced and, you know, you know when you get divorced, it, it's somewhat creates a division and you know with it you take you know my mom was a great cook and you know when my dad and mom divorced you know I don't know that the um, cooking was as good after that and when she found out when we saw <laughs> that one of our relatives had given um, my stepmother my mom's cookbook oh she was just furious um, and I think she had really every right to be um, furious. And what was really fun about this cookbook is that she had written some type of, for most of the recipes, she had some type of um, family memory or some thought of or where she got it or, you know, just kind of somewhat of family history. And 
my um, brother-in-law up in Oklahoma, hi Jay, um, and my sister Tracy, my bestie, um, my older sister, um, ended up scanning it and making a digital copy. And we have thought about self-publishing it maybe on um, through Amazon or something. But um, anyway, in fact, I have a come to find out one of my friends from high school ended up with a copy of it. I don't know how she got the copy, but it ha had bought one. And um, I think my mom maybe had 500 printed up. You know, I think she did two runs of it. But my friend, you know, post on Facebook when she makes some of my mom's pies for Christmas and it just touches my heart that, you know, my mom's recipes and my family stories are sitting um, with my friend Nan. And uh, anyway, I just, you know, after having two parents pass away in probably the last four years and um, just, you know, once that it can happen all of a sudden, and I just highly recommend that everyone, you know, everybody has a story. Everybody has a unique life experience, and that's what I love about um, YouTube is anyone can have a channel, and they can share their viewpoint and find their tribe. And that's why I'm trying to make this not just a Floss 2 video, but um, more so just not only that but also my life and um hopefully somebody um finds enjoyment of in something i say or can relate to something not necessarily all of it but um hopefully something and but i i just i highly recommend that you you talk to um your parents your grandparents if they're still alive your aunts and uncles try to capture the family stories and I have a friend that's out of town right now and she's doing that right now and um, you know just document it um, someone bought something very special for her and um, you know they kept their eye out for it it's a musical instrument and you know I suggested have her write down what made her choose this one musical instrument what spoke to her that she knew it was yours, you know, that it said, you know, this is the right one, and what she hopes you to, to take away from it, and um, those are important, and you don't realize, you know, we really take a lot of people for granted, and the other day, gosh, I was on the phone with my daughter Robin, and we, I was just sharing all kinds of family, um, lore you know a lot of it is you know you think it's true but um you know once a family member goes unless they've written diaries you know it's just lost forever so i highly recommend that you document them um get your parents and your loved ones voices on um audio tape or a video um because that's what you'll miss once they're gone and you'll be saving those phone messages that you have and trying to not ever lose them because, you know, you want to hear that voice again. So, you know, I, I just highly recommend that you take the time to do that and, and get to know our elders because, you know, I think back on my Grandma Dig that I talk a lot about and my Granny Vera. And... Grandma Dig was born in um, 1899, and she lived to be almost, she lived almost 101. She lived in three different centuries, and how amazing is that? You, you think about someone who grew up with um, purse and buggy and no electricity, no light bulbs, no telephone, no airplanes, um, just, you know, what they saw come to life within their span of, of how long they live is just remarkable. And just to think about growing up, you know, my kids, everyone has a cell phone nowadays. And, you know, when we used to drive, you had to, there was no cell phone. And um, 
you had to call on a payphone. Hopefully there was a payphone, and hopefully you had the money to <laughs> to make a call or you know call collect. But um, you know, so many things you know we take for granted nowadays, microwaves and just other things that you know back when I was growing up, Jiffy Pop was like amazing. And um, so anyway, it's just we need to honor you know our lives and what we've gone through and share them with um, our children and our grandchildren because it's part of history and it's your unique history everyone has a unique life experience and I'd much rather learn from somebody than have to go through something um, you know that's not so good when I can learn from somebody else or just those family little stories that are just so endearing or you maybe have some notorious um, relative from the past I mean how cool would that be um, anyway let me know if you do if you want to share a story in my comments I would love to hear them because um, I really I find value in that um, let me take a quick look at what I'm missing I've got um, a couple more things and I'll try to get through this um, one thing I'm some things that I'm into right now um, iced coffee I've never really had iced coffee you know I start out in the morning first thing Diet Coke second thing I started to make a, a cup of coffee and here in Texas it gets mighty hot in the afternoon so what I've been doing is you know after a certain point is making iced coffee and um, I'm not this person that's going to make a, a pot of coffee and not add anything to it. And I was trying to write down my concoction, at least today what my concoction was, and thought I would just as um, something that's funny to share with you. Um, it consisted of um, a couple of tablespoons of Starbucks mocha, um, Dunkin' Donut hazelnut, and then I still had a bag of... Um, pecan pie from Archer Farms which is the Target brand coffee it is to die for I cleaned out their shelves last fall it's it's very seasonal but I found it in my pantry it's like ah! um, it was like a, a gift from heaven and then um, to that I add I love dry creamer I'm not a half and half girl I'm not a skim milk girl I like dry creamer. Um, Splenda, you know, I've got to have it sweeter than what it comes out. And then, not only that, I take like half a package of light um, Swiss Miss Cocoa. And um, I think a packet of the full thing is like 25 calories. Um, and then a couple dollops of light Cool Whip. So you could, <laughs> it's kind of like a dessert coffee in the breakfast. But it's really quite tasty toot toot um especially when you you know it cools down and you make iced coffee out of it so um would love to know how do you drink your coffee are you one of those you know give me you know a straight up coffee with nothing added or what's your con favorite concoction or flavored coffee um now i don't go to starbucks i I don't know that I've ever had a, a coffee from Starbucks that I bought for myself. Um, I don't even know what chai tea is. I hear it talked of, it, it doesn't really sound too appealing to me, but I'm sure my daughters know. Um, so those are my two food related things, my um, salad and my iced coffee concoction. Um, thought I'd also maybe share with you what I'm watching, why I am stitching. And then also any ideas as far as cool shows to watch. Um, like I said, I have Amazon Prime, I have Hulu, I have Netflix, I have um, Apple TV, I have Hallmark, and there's probably something else. But um, currently, a friend just told me about something I've, I think there's like four seasons in. I'm just hearing about it. It's called Power, and um, that's somewhat interesting. And... Um, there's a new show that's out, I'm seeing it on Hulu, called The Bold Type. And I think it's something that just started this year. So that's really cool. It's these three interns that get permanent jobs at like a fashion magazine in New York. 
so it kind of goes along their life. Um, also, I really, really, really like Goliath on Prime Video. Um, first season probably beats the second season, but it, it's um, it's really good. I highly recommend that. Um, came across a new show. I think it's on Amazon Prime. It's um, The Cleaner. And you'll just have to watch it to find out what that's about. But um, also I, the Good Witch um, series. The I know there's several movies out, but the TV series has been out. You know, by the time I get on the bandwagon, there's usually a, quite a few series down the pike, so I can really do some binge watching. So those have been fun, and, and they're uplifting. Um, I think what I've mentioned before, movies, books. One criteria I have is it needs to end happy, and I'm one of those people, and I know I said it before, I will go to the end of the book to make sure it's a happy ending because I get too emotionally invested. I think you could see it at the first of this video. I, I just, um, I take a lot of things in, and I, I'm not going to, a storyline that ends unhappy is, is, you know, I don't want to spend time on. Um, I think we all need something uplifting. Um, also, Rise, um, I think I've mentioned, and um, on Acorn, which is a BBC UK, I think, uh, Australia type of channel, uh, Striking Out is really good, and No Offense, and 800 Words. Um, two other things. I ran across on Instagram, there is a writer, her name is Angie Smith. She is married to a, a, one of the singers in a Christian um, musical group, and she's written some really good books, and um, she has a, a book called Seamless, and I have the book, and I have every intention of reading it. Um, maybe I've gotten through the first day of the first chapter, but um, they're she, there's an offer for a um, free Bible study of this to follow the book. Um, you can um, enroll. You can go to Angie Smith, and she's on Instagram, and there's a link. And it's through Proverbs 31, and it's online Bible study. And it started, I think, June 25th. So there's still time to check um, to catch up. Of course, if you haven't purchase the book you would need to do that and they do take donations but it um, it is free for those of you that may be interested in that and then one last thing that I will end this on um, I think everyone knows who's watched any of my videos that I love Frida Kahlo and um, not only for her interesting avant-garde life but um, she was an artist and um, I also, I collect dolls. I love dolls of most any kind. Uh, you know, when I was young, it was Madame Alexander, Barbies. Um, but I like artist dolls too. So I found a, um, a Frida doll on, um, online and it was a, a artist or a artist doll maker out of Mexico. And I bought one and I ended up buying five of these and why I did that let me explain before you say why in the heck did you buy five I am picturing this as a wall installation and um, you're gonna see they're substantial they're like this big um, let me find the first one I bought and each one's very unique and they're all one of a kind I don't know if you can see her She's very exquisite. Um, hand, you know, the the yarn is braided. This is all handmade. Um, so that's the first one. If you can, I mean, she's so big, you can't even get her in a frame. So just imagine, I imagine putting her on the wall. You know, putting a nail in between each arm and have them side by side by side as an art installation. So here's one. And each one of these are, are just exquisite. Um, this one, and she has red stockings. 
she has like a little, um, a little, I don't know if it's, um, a charm, a, a make-a-wish charm or whatever. There's jewelry, there's just detailing on this and this little gold bracelet. And this is like a, a crepe skirt. So, okay, I may be crazy, but I can just see these hanging up side by side. And, um trying to show you in the order that I purchased them. Uh, this is, um, I guess her go to, her go to night, um, jammies, but, um, somewhat exquisite little top. And each one of these has like unique hairstyles. Here's, and they're like different parts of her day or I could see the first one like she's going to a gallery opening here's like every day Frida um, she has on like little leather booties and last but not least this kind of really looks like something she would wear I don't know if you can see her it's got blue taffeta she's got this wrap around her head she's got jewelry there's embroidery um, she's got these felt boots on and um, blue sweater stockings. Anyway, hopefully, I, I just can envision it. I haven't done it, um, but they're all here just waiting to be installed <laughs> as a piece of art. And, um, heck, I may be the only one that thinks it's pretty awesome, but, heck, I think it's awesome. Um... Plus, they're one of a kind, and um, anyway, I love Frida, and I love art, so I think it kind of goes together. I want to uh, thank everyone that maybe made it through this marathon. I did not intend for it to go this long. I Hopefully, you made it to the end, and um, would love for you to subscribe and come back. I, I love each and every comment. Um, anyone that watches this, thank you, thank you, thank you. I truly appreciate it. And, um, you know, I, I'm trying to share more than just stitching. But um, I am, oh, I have set up two places in my house to facilitate stitching. Once in the living room and once in the bedroom, both with um, proper lighting and magnification. And um, in the... Um, bedroom I don't need a frame I use like Q-snaps the one in the living room I've been able to use my Lowry frame um, to hold it so anyway everyone thank you for those in America happy belated 4th of July and hopefully I will be coming to you soon with more stories of, of what's going on in my life um, and there'll be hopefully another floss tube video number 12 so, everyone, good night.